Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to show you how to make magic spells in Minecraft uh, that are craftable, like in the crafting grid. This will be utilizing the new feature for our custom crafting that was implemented in the snapshots of 1.21 and is now obviously in the 1.21 update, which allows you to have custom items as the output of a crafting recipe, which was previously not done before without the use of un unobtainable items like the knowledge book and you would have to do some weird um like switching out uh you, you had to do a lot of weird stuff but now you can simply just put two items and have an output with custom nvt custom data anything like that and i'm just going to show you how to make some simple spells uh, i'm going to i'm going to show you the commands uh the link to the data pack will be in the description you can use this on any sort of world survival creative uh server or just on a single player world by yourself. So yeah, so let's get into it. I just created some simple crafting recipes. Uh, so I'm gonna show you. So I've got two um, base materials, an arrow and, and paper for projectile spells or self spells, self casting. Uh, and then I have four different ingredients here to, ca to craft four different types of spells from each of these two ingredients. And these ingredients uh, and spells are actually based off of one of the classes I made for my cool PvP game that I've been working on. Um, uh, the class is called the Elementalist, and you actually end up crafting the spells um, to use in combat, which has been a pretty neat mechanic. So let's get into it real quick. So with an arrow, uh, with each of these four different materials, you can craft either a lightning bolt, a water bolt, a frost bolt or a shadow bolt. And each of these have different effects attached to them. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory, uh, but if I summon some pigs, for example, as my victims here, obviously a lightning bolt will turn them into pigmen. Um, it summons a lightning bolt. It also deals some damage, has some cool particle effects. Uh, let's go into some of the other ones. So frost bolt, you throw it at them and they actually get uh, they actually get completely stunned for a little bit, so they can't even move. So that's pretty neat. You can see all the effects if you use it on yourself. Uh, this does affect everything in an AoE. It kind of follows uh, the AoE that you would expect from a particle effect this big. Um, you've got your Shadow Bolt, which actually gives blindness. You can't tell with the mobs, but if you hit a player, it does give them blindness. So that's pretty neat. Deals some damage as well. And then you've got the water bolt that gives some slowness and some feather falling. I meant to, to kind of give the effect of like you're in water. So it's like it's hard to swing your sword. It's hard to uh, move around quickly. So that was kind of the idea behind that. So, yeah, we got all those four projectile spells um, and now to go for the self spells. So to craft self spells, you have paper and then you can either use a lightning rod to make a lightning rush. Heart of the sea for an oasis growth. Ice for an ice block, an ink sack for a shadow step. So these actually have unique effects um, based on the player who, oh, it's not based on the player who threw it, but basically when I throw this, it'll give me speed, haste, and strength. That's the lightning rush. And how this is coded is basically it tests whoever is closest uh, will get that effect. We have the Oasis growth which gives you some regen, speed, and jump boost. Kind of neat, just for getting away and healing up real quick. And then we have the ice block, which actually makes you invincible, uh, but unable to move unless you jump, and then some regen. And then we have the last one, which is shadow step. Makes you invisible, gives you a kind of floating effect. It's a nice tool to just get some uh, vertical mobility and just get away real quick. So obviously, you know, cool, cool. You made some spells. Everyone's been doing that before. So let's get into the commands. And uh, first, I'm just going to explain um, like what is needed to be done. I'm going to go through the entire like data pack process. Um, and then I'm going to go into the commands and show you how I got, you know, all these effects to work, how I got uh, the textures on here and everything like that. So let's get into the commands. All right. So first off, uh, we're going to go into our saves. Um, so it. Uh, in the world, um, if you already have like a world um, in the game, you're going to want to look for the data packs folder. If there is none, just right click, uh, make a new folder and name it data packs. You're going to drag 
the data pack. It will be a zip file when I have it in the download. You can drag the zip file in and it will work totally fine. Uh, otherwise, um, if you want to just put it in a regular folder so you can edit it more easily, I would recommend that. You are totally welcome to do that. Drag the folder into the data packs folder. So we have the pack.mcmeta and we have the pack.png, which doesn't really matter for this experiment. Um, into the data folder, we have two namespaces. Uh, I have this name Challenger still because that's the name of the map that I was making, Challenger's Division. And so I just didn't rename it. Um, the name doesn't matter that much, but if you have like the tags function that relates to your um, to your tick.mc function, you're going to need to name it the same as that folder, which is your namespace folder. So that's why I still have it as challengers so that it's not more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, so first to go into the recipes, we're going to go into the Minecraft folder. Um, we're going to make a folder called recipe. We're going to go into that. And then this is how I coded every single recipe that I just showed you guys. So let's just go into one for an example real quick. So we got Frostbolt. Um, so because these are all shapeless recipes, they're very, very simple. Um, all you have to do is just copy down this format. Uh, make sure it's shapeless. The category doesn't matter that much. That's just like for the uh, for the knowledge book on the left, like the recipe book. Um, that is the category that it will show up in. So you can change that to weaponry or whatever. Um, and then in the ingredients tab, you, you just need to list the ingredients that you need. Um, if you need more than one of the same ingredient, uh, you can do the same format. So like if I wanted to use two arrows, I would do Minecraft colon arrow and Minecraft colon arrow. Uh, but this is for the frost bolt, so it's an arrow and ice to signify crafting a projectile ice spell. Um, and that makes the frost bolt. Um, and over here is where we're this is this is all the new stuff. So up to here, you were able to do before Minecraft 1.21. Uh, but afterwards, after 1.21, you are now able to add custom components. So to do that, all you need to do is go in. You're going to uh, put components in quotes. If it has a custom name, you need to list it exactly like this in quotes. Now, this part was actually pretty difficult for me to remember. Um, but basically, everything in the every selector and pretty and output, except for false, has these backslashes and quotations around it. I'm not sure like why that's a thing. I think it's just part of the Jason, Jason coding. Um, but that is basically what you need to do for custom name. Everything else, pretty much um, all you need to do is put quotes around uh, any sort of tags that you have. So custom model data, that's just listed uh, without the quotes when you put that in as a in a command on an item in Minecraft, um, but needs to have the quotes in order to work with the data pack. Same with custom data, and then any custom data tags that you have also need to be in quotes. So those are just the those are the things you need to keep in mind. Another thing to note real quick is that this line of code right here, the custom model data colon three, is step one of how I added the custom textures into the game. So once you add uh, this line of code that says, this is the custom model data three um, into your data pack, then we're going to go into our resource pack. So I just went to my resource packs folder. I opened up challengers division pack, which is the resource pack I used for making my map. We're going to go into assets. We're going to go into Minecraft and then we're going to go into models and then items. And we're going to look up snowball, which is the item that you. Um, so the item where you're going to want to put in all of the custom model data tags is the item that is going to actually be used. So all of the spells that were throwable that I had custom textures on, they were all snowballs. So I'm going to open this up and then from here, uh, you can see all of these predicates um, that represent all of the different spells. So these three are in the game, but I did not use for this uh, data pack, obviously. But as you can see, we have custom model data 
colon three here that relates to Frostbolt, which is the same as the custom model data three that's used in the data pack. So those just need to match and then that can work out just fine. And then after that, you're going to need to make a frostbolt.json file here. You're going to have to copy it down just like so um, and name it what you want to name it. And that is basically completely related to the snowball.json file here. And then from there, all you need to do is you need to go into the textures folder and then go into item, whatever item you're looking for. And then the name of what you use is going to be your texture. So if I open this up, this is the texture my wife made for the Frostbolt. All right, so now let's get into the rest of this. So we're gonna go into the data folder again. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do um, is so you have your Minecraft folder, you should have a namespace folder. Um, you're gonna need to go into tags and you're going to need to make a folder called function. And then you're going to need to do load.json and tick.json. Um, these basically tell the data pack which files in your function folder uh, are tick files and which are load files. Tick files run every tick, every tick, which is uh, 20 times per second in game. And load files will run when you first load the data pack. So we won't have any load um, functions for this data pack, but we will have tick functions. So we're going to need to add an entry called values, put curly brackets around it, and we're going to put in quotations, your namespace, colon, tick. And then that will signify that that folder is a um, tick function. So now we're gonna go into that. We're gonna go back to data. We're gonna go into our namespace folder, into our function folder, and then we're gonna go into our tick folder. And we're gonna get into this mess. Now this looks like a, raw, a lot, but most of it is actually completely repeated. So let's just break it down real quick. We're just gonna do Frostbolt as an example. So um, the first thing that this uh, data pack is doing is it's this is actually just coding how the snowballs work. Um, so the first command here is basically saying, hey, if there is a, well, the execute is at P is just um, like, execute as any player run um you're going to find a snowball that has the custom data that we implemented into the snowball so it doesn't just execute as any snowball like you know if, if you're playing this on a survival world someone just like shovels a piece of snow and throws it it's not gonna do all these effects um it's only gonna be the one that you craft that has this custom data um and then that is going to summon an area effect cloud when it hits um, when it hits the ground, basically. So now what the rest of these commands are doing, which you will copy in, if, if, if I hover over this, you can see that pretty much all of these are the same. Some of them say at P, some of them say at A. All of them could be at A. Um, they pretty much work either way. Um, this is testing for that effect cloud. Um, and testing to see if the snowball is nearby. Cause so this is a, like summoning area effects clouds constantly. Um, and, and then once the snowball either hits a player or hits a block, um, it's basically gonna be like, wait, there's no more snowball. What the heck do we do with our lives? Um, and then it's gonna run this command. So that's how it ends up doing the AOE effect because the snowball ceases to exist and Kaboom. That's pretty much it. So after that, you can basically put anything uh, you want. So um, I have it giving slowness and mining fatigue and then um, doing these particle effects. Uh, if you are doing potion effects like this, make sure you are putting a distance tag on here. Uh, zero to three basically means um, anything from zero to three blocks away from the snowball when it lands. Uh, is going to be affected by the effects. If you don't put a distance tag on this and you do something like at E, which is all entities, then it's going to affect every single entity in the world, no matter what. So you need to make sure you put a distance tag around that. 
Uh, and then the last thing that I did other than potion effects and the sounds and particle effects is I did a slash damage command. I just had it deal some magic damage. Um, you could have it deal any type of damage you want. You could change it to frost damage. Um, if you know how the damage command works, that's, you know, you can do pretty much anything you want with that. So basically just repeat that and I have different effects for each of the spells here until we get to the self spells. Now for the self spells, basically what I have it doing is I'm saying, hey, um, test every single entity in the world. If that entity is um, the poppy with a custom data, which is the one that you craft in the crafting table, um, then give these effects to the nearest player. And that's pretty much what I did for all of these. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, like I said, the links are in the description for if you want to download this data pack and use it on any world or server that you want, you are totally welcome to. I encourage you to look through the commands and edit anything yourself. Uh, none of the spell crafting recipes I did, I consider balanced at all. Um, I just did them because that is what the crafting recipes were in the game that I'm making. So make sure you subscribe if you enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.